All right, inscribed angles. Notice the difference between the inscribed and the central. We defined this yesterday, but let's review it. Um, it is an inscribed angle is an angle with its vertex on the circle. The vertex is on the circle with two sides that are chords. An intercepted arc is the arc that lies between the chords of an inscribed angle. The degree of the inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. The degree of the inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Um, and it should kind of make sense if you compare it to the central angle. So on this picture, I'm also going to draw the central angle that has the same um, endpoints. Okay, so if I compare this angle here at P to the angle at B, is it not pretty clear that the angle at B is smaller than the angle at P? We see that, okay? So what they're wanting you to put in that blank beside the measure of angle ABC is that it is one half the measure of arc AC. So whatever arc AC is there, Half of that is the measure of angle ABC. Okay, intercepting a diameter. Intercepting a diameter. If an inscribed angle intercepts a diameter, then it is a... I'm not sure what goes in that blank right there. Looks like a diameter. Yes, it is a right angle. It is a right angle. Thank you, Joe. It is a right angle. Okay. Um, because, let's think about it. Okay. We're the angle at A is the inscribed angle. The angle at A is the inscribed angle. So if we look at what it intercepts, it intercepts half of our circle right here. Half of our circle is 180 degrees. So its measure is half of that. So it is 90 degrees. The measure of angle BAC is 90 degrees. You do have a right angle right there. All right, overlapping arcs. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. That should make sense. They intercept the same arc, so they should have the same measure. So the statement there says the uh, measure of ABD is, is equal to the measure of ACD. So let me use two different colors here. Um, ABD is an inscribed angle. Um, the way I, like I showed you yesterday, extend those lines. And that way you can see where your arc is. Um, if I do the same thing with angle ACD, even though that angle is in a different place, it intercepts the same arc. Extend the sides of that angle, and it shows you exactly what part of the uh, circle you're talking about. So ABD and ACD have the same angle measure because they intercept the same arc. All right, let's see here. This says find each angle and arc measures. So it depends on which one they ask us for. Um, on number one, they show us that the arc from W to Y is 62 degrees, and we want the angle of uh, the measure of angle W, X, Y. So that's the inscribed angle. So it is half. It is 31 degrees. On number two, they give us the measure of an inscribed angle. Anytime they give me the angle, I always like to extend it so I can see clearly what arc I'm intercepting and if that's what they're asking me for or if I need to do some more work. Um, so from D to G to F, that is what they're asking me for. So it is two times. You got to go the other way. If you know the angle, you got to multiply it by two to get the arc. Um, so what would that be? 226. 
degrees. Don't get lazy on me. Make sure you put that degree symbol. Okay, make sure you put the degree symbol. All right, number three, they don't give us any measurements, but we see a diameter in our picture here, so we're probably talking about the 90 degree relationship, but let's see what they're asking us about. They want the measure of angle P, P Q, R, so outline it, P, Q, R. It does intercept half of the circle, so the arc is 180. So the inscribed angle is 90. It is asking us for that right angle there at Q. Okay, number four. Okay, number four, be careful. Number four is similar to number three. They show you a diameter, but that angle is not intercepting that arc. Okay, it is not intercepting that arc. It's intercepting a different part so that's where the 47 is coming from. So 2 times 47 would be, bless you, 94 degrees. So don't get thrown. Just because there's a diameter does not mean that the answer is 90 degrees on that. Yes, sir. It does ask for the measure of BC. Good catch. Got to pay attention to what it's asking for. That's 94 right there. BC is this side over here. Here's where the diameter comes into play. Okay, so we are looking at half of our circle here. So if we've got 94 from A to C, then we're left with what? 96, or excuse me, 86. 86 to go from B to C. Obviously, this picture is not exactly drawn to scale because 94 and 86 are not that far apart from each other, but it does look like from A to C is bigger than from B to C. Thank you, Dawson. All right, number five. Number five. Uh, let's look, first of all, at what they're asking us for so that we, we get that clearly this time. Uh, the measure of angle JKL. JKL. I'm going to outline that. So that means I need, or it will be helpful to know, the arc JML. I don't have it right now, but they did give me two other measurements over here. And those two other measurements make up the rest of the circle. So if I do 360 minus the 65 minus the 53, I'm going to be left with, from J to M to L, 242. But I want the measure of the angle, so I divide the arc by 2 and get 121 for the angle. All right, number 6 looks pretty involved because um, we've got this weird-looking shape. And we've got these two triangles in there. Let's see what they want. They want the measure of angle RST, so R to S to T. Okay, um, I don't have the arc, so I'm going to have to do some work. Let me look at what other information that they did give me, though. Well, they have this circle split up into four arcs. They gave me the other three. So similar to what I just did, I'm going to take away the three that they gave me. From my total of 360, minus 64, minus 139, minus 75. That leaves me with 82. And then my angle is, of course, half that, so 41. Now, our angle RUT, RUT, well, that intercepts the exact same arc, doesn't it? Okay, it intercepts the same arc that angle RST did, so it has the same measure. It's just intercepting it from a different angle or direction. Same angle measure, just I meant direction. All right, um, I'm going to do, let's see here, I'm going to do number seven, and then I'll let you do number eight here in a little while. Uh, solve for X. Basic scenario here, we've got an angle in the intercepted arc. 
but we have uh, a variable. Okay, we have a variable this time. Uh, so half of the arc equals the angle. So 1 half times 158 equals the 8x minus 9. So 1 half of 158 would be what? 79 is equal to 8x minus 9. So add the 9. So that gives us 88 is equal to 8x. So 11 is equal to x. And it did say solve for x. We're not going to do number eight, but somebody tell me what's the difference between number seven and number eight? What's the difference in the setup between number seven and number eight? Okay, they gave us the angle this time. So instead of doing one half, which I mean we could, technically you could still do one half the arc to get the angle. Because this arc is, does have even factors, so that would work out okay. Personally, um, I think it's easier to do 2 times the angle equals the arc. Okay, So 2 times the angle equals the arc, or 1 half the arc equals the angle. It just depends on, bless you, depends on what information you get. All right, so you can finish number 8 here in a minute. Um, let's do... Let's do number... Uh, no, 13. Let's look at number 13. If the measure of angle FGH, FGH is 6x plus 21. I'm just going to draw a little arrow because I can't fit 6x plus 21 on my picture. If you can write that tiny, go for it. But I'm just going to draw a little arrow. And the measure of arc FJH is 17x minus 28. I can fit that over there from F to J to H. Um, that is the arc that goes with that inscribed angle. So again, you can do it either way. This is one that I would do two times the angle equals the arc. Because if I tried to do half the arc, 17 is not an even number. So I'd end up with fractions and I'd just rather not have to deal with fractions if I don't have to. So two times the angle equals the arc. Make sure when you do two times that you distribute. So that's 12x plus 42. We've got variables on both sides. So let's subtract the 12x. So 17x minus 12x is 5x. And add 28. So that gives us 70. 42 plus 28, 70, divide by 5, is that 24? 24 equals x, but they didn't ask us for just x. They asked for the measure of arc FJH. Yeah, it'll be 14. 5 does not go in 7 twice. 5 goes in 7 once. Thank you. <coughs> just making sure y'all are paying attention. Yeah. It is 14. Okay. Um, plug it back in. Plug it back into the original. Uh, well, not the original. Plug it into the expression that they give us for FJH. 17 times 14 minus 28. Definitely not going to try and do that one in my head since I can't divide 70 by 5 today. 17 times 14 minus 28. 210 degrees. Now, if you really want to check yourself, you could also plug the 14 into the angle, 6 times 14 plus 21, and make sure that that is half of the arc. And 105 is half of, of 210. So that would just be a way to kind of check what you had going there. Okay. Um, let's look at the last one. Let's do the last one together. If the measure of angle KJL, KJL is 3x plus 2, so that's the angle right there, and the measure of angle KLJ is 7x minus 32, Find the measure of arc K 
K-L. Now, there are several different ways that we could go about solving this problem. Anybody want to offer a suggestion? What's the measure of angle K? 90. So, one way that we can do this is we have expressions for two out of the three angles in a triangle, and we know the third angle, and how many degrees are in the triangle? 180. So, we could add the 3x plus 2 plus the 7x minus 32 plus the 90 and set it equal to 180. That's one way. Um, so that would say that 10x minus 30 is equal to 90. And so 10x is equal to 120. So x is equal to 12. We could have also said that if the angle at j is 3x plus 2, then 2 times that is the arc from k to l. So 6x plus 4 is the arc from k to l. And if the angle at l is 7x minus 32, then the arc from j to k would be 14x minus 64. And those two arcs together are how much of our circle? Half, so we could add those together and set them equal to 180. We would we would have gotten the same value for x. Okay, I'm just showing you you could have done it from either perspective. What we did really didn't have anything to do with inscribed angles except for the fact how we found angle k to be 90 degrees. Um, we still haven't answered the question though. We just found x. It wants the measure of, a, of arc kl. Well, I just came up with the expression for that because it's two times the angle of j. So 6 times 12 plus 4, 6 times 12 is 72, 72 plus 4 is 76. Okay, so takeaways from this. I think it is very helpful when you're doing inscribed angles to trace the sides of the angle through the sides of the circle so you can see exactly what your intercepted arc is. Um, that tends to help people the most. I really, really encourage you to draw on these pictures. Um, use the diagram. Use the fact that you have it right in front of you. Um, don't try and just do a whole bunch in your head and uh, not show a lot of work.